So going back to Dave Ramsey first in his corner, again, alphabetically, he goes first. He has something he calls the seven baby steps. So this is investment philosophy. So if you want to invest like Dave Ramsey, this is what you would do. This is what he'd tell you if you worked with him directly, the seven baby steps. And uh, let's, let's dig into it. So number one, save $1,000 for your starter emergency fund. Great. I applaud that. Good job, Dave. You should certainly do that. As a matter of fact, it should be more than $1,000. Uh, obviously, the more the better. But I guess, you know, set that as your first goal. Now, if you don't have savings, you're a slave. And I mean that because if you have no savings, you can't quit your job. If you have a month worth of savings, uh, if you, you know, a month worth of expenses saved up, you could quit your job and then go find a new job in that month period or two months or three months or whatever that is. If you have no savings, you cannot quit. You're basically a slave. So uh, I do applaud that. I would like to say, you know, 30 days at least, if not up to 90 days of savings. For me, um, having gone through what I went through in 2008, I like 12 months <laughs> of savings, but you figure out what you need to, need to have there. But you need to have that emergency fund. Uh, the, the number's changing, but something about... Uh, uh, about 40%, according to bank rate, 40% uh, of Americans cannot afford a $1,000 emergency expense right now. All right. So that's a big deal. You should do that. Step number two, he says to pay off all your debt, except for your house. So he doesn't, he says, except for the house, but pay off all your debt. He uses something called the debt snowball, which is basically you list all your debts, uh, small to large, and you start paying off the smallest one first, uh, and then to the largest one. And that works because of the psychological wins. You know, you start seeing some action, you knock off a couple payments, which, you know, makes it easier. Um, and then you can grow from there. I would rather pay off the most expensive debt with the highest uh, payment, not the payment, but the highest interest rate. If I have a 22% credit card and a 6% credit card, I should pay off the 22% debt first, not the six, but that's his plan. Um, the, another stat for you, the American, the average American has $92,000 in consumer debt. That's per experience, 92,000, almost six figures. Uh, then step three is now after you've got a thousand, you've paid off your debt, then you save three to six months of expenses. And he wants you to put this in an emergency fund to ensure financial security in case anything happens like a job loss or medical um, or emergencies, things like that. All right. Um, number four. Now you want to start investing 15%, assuming you've got these things done, start investing 15% of your household income into your retirement. And again, he suggests investing in tax advantage retirement accounts like 401ks, Roth IRAs, focusing on mutual funds. Mutual funds is basically, I just give my money to somebody else and they figure it out for me. It's diversified against a whole bunch of assets um, and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I don't like that plan. I think with a little bit of education, uh, a little bit of focus, you could do much, much better, which pays massive dividends, seven figure dividends over the future. Uh, but again, I do like it because again, it basically you put no thought, no effort into it, which allows you to go focus on making money. Now, if you're taking that extra time, effort, energy, and focus, focusing on making more money, you might come out ahead. You probably will. If you're instead taking all that extra time so you can watch more Netflix and chill, you're going to get further behind. All right. So you need to consider that. Uh, then finally five, you want to start saving for your children's college fund. Um, this is what Dave says, not me. Uh, he wants you to save money into a, a education plan, like a five, two, nine plan for me. I don't want my kids to go to college specifically. Don't want them to go to college. Um, so my oldest daughter, it just graduated. She is not going to college and I don't expect my youngest to go either. If they want to go, they're welcome to go. They want to be a doctor and attorney. Sure. Go ahead. Um, we don't go to college for college sake. I would rather, I, I posed the question to my daughter. We'll get back to this with Robert Kiyosaki, but I said, would you rather me spend $250,000 for you to go to a four or five year college? And when you get out, you can hopefully get a job for 50 or you know $50,000 a year. Or would you rather I use the 250 and buy you real estate with it that pays you 50,000 for the rest of your life? She said, I like the real estate option. I said, good choice. Right. And so that's what we're doing. Anyway, uh, keep going. Uh, number six, now you start to pay off your home early. Uh, his goal is to become completely debt free by paying off the mortgage early. Now this, again, I don't like this. And the reason why I don't like this is a couple of reasons. One, um, by writing that off, I, or by paying that debt off, I don't have some tax write-offs that I might need, you know, writing off the interest on my debt. Uh, but number two, assuming that I have that debt, about 90% of mortgages are locked in below 5%. I think 40% of mortgages are locked down below 3% mortgage. So if you have a 3% interest and you have a 5%, 6, 7, 8% inflation, inflation is paying your debt off. So I have a 30 
two-year loan. So let's say right now, for easy numbers, um, it's taking $1,000 for me to pay off my mortgage every month. But in 10 years from now, my pay will have probably gone up, and that $1,000 will be more like $600, and in 20 years, that $1,000, because my payment is still fixed at $1,000, it'll be now like paying like 400 bucks a month. And so that inflation is paying off my debt, which is, again, why we're in a debt-based monetary system. They want to inflate, inflate away the debt, but it also inflates away my debt. So I would rather invest my money and make 10 15% and keep my 3% mortgage, unlike what Dave says. But I get it. Uh, it's like leverage. If you have no debt, you're a little bit safer off. Uh, number seven, finally, now you build wealth and then you give generously. I applaud him on that. Uh, giving is a big piece of what I do. I think everyone should be doing it, if not even just for the smallest piece and start building that. Uh, so I applaud Dave Ramsey for that. All right, now let's turn to Robert Kiyosaki. Um, he has six points. Let's see if I can get through these. The first one, and this is going to turn everybody upside down on their head. And again, go read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It was, like I said, probably the one of the top two or three most influential books on my business and investing career. Um, he has one, the rich don't work for money. Hmm. They don't work for money. Now there's two things in this. So first of all, they don't work for money. They have money work for them. You see, I work really hard for money and I want my money to work even harder than I do. So I want my money to work hard. And two, I don't actually work for money, meaning I don't trade time for money. And I think this is the, probably the biggest thing that holds people back from ever branching out and having uh, big success is most people just can't imagine working without getting paid. They won't do it. You see, the wealthy, uh, like what I've done, is I've worked for years for free, learning new skills, trying new things, developing new strategies in the hope that one day those skills, that time I put in will get me something later. And I'll work for, for years doing that without getting paid. But see, most people are used to working for an hourly wage and they can't imagine working for months or years and not getting paid. So rich don't work for money. Number two, financial literacy. Now, when, when you talk about, when he, Kiyosaki talks about financial literacy, he's talking about it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. You see, rich people think about how much income, poor people think about how much income they have, but it's not about income. It's not about the income, it's about how much you keep it that goes into your savings or really builds up your assets. Um, and you need to understand that at the difference between assets and liabilities. You see, like most people think like I have my house, but he explains that your house is not an asset, your house is a liability. Why? Because assets put money into your pocket, liabilities take money out of your pocket. So just ask yourself for your home, does your house put money in your pocket or out? It takes it out, obviously. Now, if you have a rental property, that puts money into your pocket, right? So there's a difference there. Uh, but you really have to understand what that difference is. And really, you see that on your balance sheet. So in the book, he breaks down how to use a balance sheet and how to look at the um, income and the expenses and the assets there. This is the cheat code. This is the cheat code. As a matter of fact, I have a template for a balance sheet. Just go to onemarkmoss.com and you can download it for free. It's what I call the scorecard. You see, everyone's focusing on how much money they make. It's not about how much money you make. In California, you can, be, you can make a million dollars and still be broke. It's crazy. Uh, it's not about how much you make. It's about what your balance sheet shows. It's about what your scorecard shows. So I have a free download. You can get it if you want. Just go to onemarkmoss.com, download it for free, fill that out. And if you track that every single month, what get measured, get managed. If you measure that every month, it will grow. The third one is mind your own business. Okay. So again, the rich focus on their assets, the poor focus on income. How much money am I making? Can I get a higher paying job? They focus on their income as opposed to the assets that they buy with their income. Am I buying the right asset? Is this the right asset to buy at this time? How can I get this asset to go up in value? How can I get this asset to pay me more income instead of focusing on my income? They also um, understand minding your own business is that talented people um, are typically poor because they're focusing on let's say the improvement, let's say like McDonald's, they're focusing on how to make a better hamburger and not about building the hamburger business and creating systems around it. So it runs automatically, systematically without me. 
You see, uh, how can I do this better as opposed to how can I build the business to do this for me? Uh, the fourth thing is, and this is a big piece that Dave Ramsey just leaves out completely, and it's a massive fail in my opinion. This is uh, back to Robert Kiyosaki. Number four, the rich understand taxes. Now, you have to understand the IRS uh, is your partner, whether you like it or not. They take, depending on your tax bracket and where you live, if you're in the top tax bracket in you know, California, they take about half of your income. They're your partner, 50-50. And so it's a pretty good idea if you have a business partner to understand what your business partner wants, what, what, what they're trying to do, and how you can work together with them. And so Robert Kiyosaki talks a lot about um, using taxes properly and specifically lowering your taxes. It's your single biggest expense. Remember, back to saving 15% to 40% of your income, you can either make more income or you can cut your expenses. Well, the, one of the biggest ways uh, if you're going to cut expenses is cut your single biggest expense, which is taxes. So... The way it typically works, and Robert Kiyosaki points out, is that owners earn income, then they spend whatever they want to spend, and then they pay tax on the money that's left over. Whereas employees earn, and then they pay taxes, and then they get to spend whatever's left. It's a big difference. Now, back to Robert Kiyosaki talking about real estate. If you don't want to pay taxes, one of the best ways to not pay taxes is with real estate and businesses. You see, again, they're your partner. So, for example, the government, it's not loopholes. The government has incentives, not loopholes, incentives. Why, are, why is that different? A loophole is like a way to get out of something. An incentive is working in alignment with what you want. So, for example, the government needs places for people to live, right? They need housing and apartments for people to live in. So they can't provide that. But if you are willing to do that, if you're willing to buy a, a house or an apartment building and rent it out, then they'll give you an incentive to do that. They also need employment. As a matter of fact, it's one of the two Fed mandates to have full employment. Well, how does the Fed give employment or the government? They don't, they can't. But you can if you start a business. So the government wants you. They need you to start a business. And if you do, they have an incentive. They incentivize you to do the things they want, like start a business and buy real estate. That's why you don't pay tax. So you need to learn that. Uh, number five, the rich create money. I call this wealth creation. You see, Dave Ramsey wants you to save your way to wealth. It's not how it works. You don't save your wealth. We have to create wealth. How do, how do the rich create wealth? How do they create money? Well, it uh, starts with your mind. It starts with your ideas. Robert Kiyosaki talks about it as an infinite return. You have an unlimited amount of ideas that you can have. So it starts with your mind. You have to have ideas. Then you have to turn those ideas into actions, and you, you need the skills in order to do that. You have to have skills in order to develop that. I call this, uh, I talk about it in three different levels of, of, uh, of capital. So most people only focus on one form of capital, which is actually the hardest to get and the least effective to use, and that's financial capital. I don't have enough money. Uh, it takes money to make money. I can't do anything because I don't have any money. They don't have the financial capital, so they, they spend all their time there. They think they're stuck there. But it's not financial capital that really matters more. It's actually the mental capital. It's the skills. Or as Robert Kiyosaki says, we create money with our skills. If you have the skills to make more money, and then third is the relationship capital. Do you know people? So I know people who give me opportunities, and I have the skills to back that up. It doesn't take me any money. So it starts with your mind. We can create wealth by having the idea, having the skills to develop that, and then, of course, continue to plant the seeds that continue to grow. Um, Robert Kiyosaki, the, the sixth one is work to learn, not to earn. So he says that it, uh, education is more valuable than money. That's the point I'm just making right now. Education is more valuable than money. You see, if I have the education of how to, if I, if I can come into your business and make you a million dollars, would you give me a hundred grand? Like, of course you would. But how could I do that? Well, only if I have the education, if I have the skills in order to do that. So the skills you need to figure out is how to make more money. How do you do that? Well, I want to learn sales, marketing, sales and marketing. That's the rainmaker. That's how you drive money. I want to learn speaking and negotiating. I need to be able to present myself. I need to present my ideas. I need to have persuasion. I need to be able to negotiate things. And this goes whether you're trying to negotiate with your kids, your wife, or uh, you know a, a business deal. And we also need to learn how how to learn. I talk about this quite a bit. We need to learn how to learn, and we also need to learn how to teach. We need to do both of those. And so we need to work to learn 
not to earn. And this goes back to kind of the first point about the rich don't work for money, right? I'm working to learn because if I learn and advance my skills and make more money, I'm not working for the money. Um, and then, um, so, so that's, that's Robert Kiyosaki's six points. 